So I'm going to uh, just spend the last few slides just going through a few cases, and then hopefully we can spend some time talking uh, about some of the questions that you all have. So this is an example of a lipoma. So this is a uh, dorsal um, lipoma in the setting of an 18-month-old male who presented with early onset scoliosis. Now, he was seen by our orthopedic surgery colleagues, and they did their scoliosis films. And in addition to the scoliosis, they found that there was several levels that included uh, hemivertebrae. And this, and this red arrow kind of indicates this right here. And the dorsal lipoma, which is bright on this T2 sagittal image, as they uh, always are. Uh, and he was diagnosed with a dorsal lipoma with a fibrofatty phylum terminale. So this child not only had a low-lying conus, um, but also had a dorsal lipoma uh, and setting up scoliosis as well. Um, we chose to um, uh, detether this child by removing the lipoma and sectioning the phylum terminale. So meningocele, so this is an interesting case. This was a newborn male with no prenatal diagnosis of a neural tube defect, born via spontaneous uh, vaginal delivery, and he was found to have a large fluid-filled mass on the posterior neck. So this is uh, a, a image of the, the mass itself. And you can see here, uh, it, it does appear to be fluid filled, kind of a pedunculated mass on the aspect, uh, the dorsal aspect of the spinal, uh, uh, midline spinal column there. And subsequent MRI image demonstrated this. So this would be a dorsal, uh, a closed neural tube defect with a dorsal subcutaneous mass. And uh, you can see here, the MRI was performed to ensure that there was no neural elements involved in the uh, mass itself. And this turned out to be a simple meningocele, which was resected on day of life three. Uh, and the baby did very well and continues to do well with no neurological deficits to date. This is a, another example. This is a, a child who uh, presented to me uh, from a pediatric surgery colleague, an eight-month-old female with anorectal stenosis who was found to have a tethered spinal cord and a small syrinx and a fatty phylum terminale on screening MRI of the L-spine without contrast. Um, you can see on this uh, sagittal uh, MRI, which is a T2-weighted image, you can see the small syrinx within the spinal canal. And at this uh, uh, level here on a T1 image, you can see this bright white area here. It's probably a little hard to appreciate on Zoom, um, but that's indicative of fat. Um, and this child had a fat phylum terminale, which we sectioned um, to detether this child um, due to the presence of a syrinx. Split cord malformations. Uh, this is another closed neural tube defect that will likely present later in life, uh, secondary to spinal cord tethering. There's two types of split cord uh, malformations. Type one is where there's two dural sacs and an osseous or fiber spur. Um, and these ch children are usually symptomatic in the way of scoliosis uh, or spinal cord tethering, urinary dysfunction, lower extremity dysfunction, pain, dysesthesias, things like that. Type two is where there's a single dural sac, and this is a complete or incomplete cord division, and these children tend to be less symptomatic. A dermal sinus tract. This is a closed neural two defect that does require treatment uh, at some point, and this is really uh, to prevent uh, connection with the outside world. So this was a newborn with a dimple in the lumbar spine above the coccyx. It was uh, investigated with an MRI scan. You can see an anomalous connection here. Uh, basically, this yellow area is showing you a tract that with uh, basically continuity to the outside world, as uh, you can see here on this axial uh, MRI, which is T2. And, and in addition, uh, on day of life two, there was actually occasional clear fluid that was draining from the tract. And so uh, this child was taken to surgery for obliteration uh, and removal of that tract and primary closure of the neural tube um, and defect uh, in the dura uh, and to prevent further meningitis. Everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.